so good afternoon everyone and well as you can see on the slide could you make a quick guess and guess what the number means any volunteers like number May 1st May 1st and any other opinions Fujian <laughs> okay well that means in every one second, five more people become active internet users in Asia. So how amazing. That's really a great amount. So how can we utilize this trend to encourage people to use open source for education? And that's why I'm here today. I would like to share how to share open source by translating for education. And while I am a second year student at National Chengdu University, and what I think I might be the youngest speaker today, but I had a, uh, I had a, last year I didn't even know what an open source is, but today I have a great chance to stand on this stage and to share my passion for open source and on a great conference. So before we go into the details, let me give you a picture. Um, traditionally, students in Taiwan, we just, uh, we just sit in the classroom and listen to a lecture. Usually we, when during the lecture, we uh, stare, our, stare our teachers on stage and listen to whatever they say. So keep taking notes. Students in Taiwan seldom ask or even raise in any questions. So to be honest, it is extremely boring. And for me, it is hard for us to learn without any interaction with the teachers. So we want to make a difference as a student. And so we try to but however our generation has so many resources online like open source or a lot of information and we can complement the education system and even start self-learning so let me show how students in taiwan start self-learning and lately there's an earthquake occurring in taiwan and it causes hundreds of people injured so people including me have a strong motivation to learn learn more about a uh, earthquake and we want to take precaution against it so we will type in soil liquefaction and it is a usual reason that occurs uh, so many damages for earthquake and well we will, google is always a great tool for us to learn and we'll type in soil liquefaction as here and we found a lot of resources but uh, and wikipedia is also helpful so we'll click in here hope the network is still oh my god all right so here we still have a lot of information and abundant of resources here but students in Taiwan do have a problem. What's the obstacle for students in Taiwan access the knowledge? Anyone wants to imagine? English? Yes, definitely. Language barriers. We really admire those countries, uh, English speaking countries like Singapore or India that they seldom face those challenges, but we do. Actually, students in Taiwan, we just uh, skip all those vocabularies and miss all those incredible resources and you know turn back to chinese version you know find some user-friendly information but we got uh, confined to what we already know we just depend on the translation and we seldom get the really access to the you know the information from all all over the whole world and well so we want to browse through more and cut and depends on what we can explore more about the internet and so we go back to the okay so we browse through the internet and want to find more information and we found here uh it's uh, it's united states geological survey and here has some technical materials for teaching what is the soil liquefaction and well here's even an animation here so let me play it in so this is uh, exactly how to explain the soil liquefaction. And while we can learn from this, and, and animations speak louder than thousands of words. Comparing with the Wikipedia, this way is an easy access for us to understand or have a deeper understanding about the concept. So we want to deal with the problem effectively and efficiently. We want to congregate people, people's effort to join our translating program and also build a community. So here, so here we create a community. 
we can create a community to overcome the language barriers and to uh, provide the information of updated software. By translating the information, we not only provide the materials for the students to start self-learning, self but also an easy access for a uh, general public to know the advantages of open source. So you know, we start from the school, like uh, from my school, NCKU, and we also share with other other schools to join our program. And uh, well, well, mm, we in, we even communicate with the user because we want to provide the information which they are interested in. So instead of with for the people, we try to be with the people, and we transform our schools into centers and to spread the ideas through the regions where they are uh, located. And let me explain more how we translate it. And here, the animation from open source physics is about physics, and uh, it's obvious. And we try to use the animation to let the students easily understand the concept. And by translating the uh, animation, you know, the teachers can inspire students think outside the box and even use their imagination to understand uh, the the easy, con difficult science concept. And well, in this, we tra by translating the animation on this website, we, we provide the open source as a tool to empower students to access the knowledge. And while goes are saying, learning doesn't end in the classroom. By translating these kind of materials on website, we, pro we provide the tools for them to automatically choose what to, what to learn and to deepen the, you know, the, deepen the part which we are interested in. And so next, uh, what's our result? An hour of code it, uh, is originated uh, in America. It, it's for spreading the ideas of coding. But what have we did? We, we, launched a, we launched a program which is Hour of Translate. Just in this January, we, invite, we cooperate with the schools and the professors to, to, join, to open the course and invite students to join our translating program. And so, in an hour, we just uh, translate a book and named Unplug, CS Unplugged, which is the basic introduction here, basic introduction for computer science. And here you can see just this March, we have a uh, here. In this March, we finished the translation program in just for an hour and for 70 students. And the most inspiring part for me is hey, a girl named Christina and she came to me and she told me that she found the happiness of sharing. And she told me that she just only shared an hour with us, but together we really concur our goals because um, you know, the we have a, a program which is Hour of Translation, and F, she told me that everyone can make a contribution to our culture. No matter how small pieces we did, how small tiny parts we try to solve the problems, but together we can uh, change our culture tangibly. And that is exactly what we want to express. We want to raise the awareness of Taiwanese to make a movement and to change the habits of using software. And that's what we really desire to do. And next, we even launch a winter camps. We want to transform, uh, trans change the habits of using software for the students because uh, as a young, as a very young age, we have the most potential to change our using habits so that we won't be confined than what confined to what we already knew. And so in this, just this winter break, we launch a workshop to teach students how to use open source and to raise the awareness of using open source. And as a higher, of, higher level of learner, it is really convincing that we tell them that when you learn how to use open source, like you know, the opensource.com or, um, or some Inkscape or some open source other materials, and it's really useful for your near future, for learning, or even for your career. So uh, the students were really convinced by us and they start the awareness of using open source. So we, make, we bring open source to their lives and let the open source begin in their daily life. Well, next. So these are the programs we are working on. And what's next? We try to use big data to analyze the vocabularies so that we can gather the information to directly indicate what is the language barriers so that we can 
teach them what these vocabularies are, are directly the meaning, and so that we can overcome the language barriers. And well, we even try big data to analyze the steps that which are most frequently used, and so that we can um, use the vocabularies and the steps at the same time for a report. So it is really user friendly for students and maybe the general public to start to use open source. And the next part will be, we will build a bigger community for Taiwan. Now we already have five schools to join us and the students are really inspired by the open source. And in the future we want to invite more schools to come to our platform or our community and even just join an hour of translation for us and we can, uh, together we can change our culture. And so this is the quote of the administration of Taiwanese government. And he pointed out that 2016 is an open era, is an open era for changing the world. And well, with the support of the government, we can change the culture and the education system tangibly because uh, in the past, the government just ignored this issue that we keep spending a lot of money um, buying some, you know, some expensive software, but just for free and open source, we can really change the use environment and to change the general public and so that we can conquer our goals. And I am t only 20 and I'm trying to make a difference and, you know, I'm open, I'm ready. And how about you? So thank you for listening. Uh, how do you ensure the quality of translation? Like, does someone check if it's been properly translated? Yeah, we will. Uh, after the students' translation, we will have the administration to recheck again to uh, make sure the quality is qualified for the English and Chinese translation. And uh, have there been any attempts to use uh, things like artificial intelligence to kind of automate the translation process? Like, you know. Like what, uh, uh, translate dot dot google dot dot com does a little bit at the back end. Yes. It, it, it can translate, but some sometimes the gra gra grammar and stuff like that are not very good. So, uh, has there been any attempts to automate the translation process? You mean automatic translation yeah. process, but uh, you know the function of those Google translation isn't that well. Yes. The the meaning of the word isn't that ac accurate, so we should use it as personal to check the information. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, are there any plans to follow up with more hours of translation in um, other places in Taiwan? Yes, yes. We cooperate with the schools. We want to spread the ideas. So we only start from NCKU and this, uh, just at this uh, March, we started and we just have 70 people, but we start to plan for other schools and join our OWF Translate. So maybe there are 3,000 schools in Taiwan, so we have a lot of things to do. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks. Um, yeah. Yes, question. So, because uh, I don't quite understand, like, is it, is it for software? Or is it for content like Wikipedia? Mm, it's for, we want to focus on software. We don't want to change the habits of using software. So, uh, uh, like translating, localizing software? Yes, yes. Just like a brief introduction for the software. Mm -hmm. And we translate it from English into Chinese. So, how do you do that? Is it, is it documentation wise or is it like user interface? We want to visualize them as a report. Mm -hmm. And some will be document of both of them. Are you translating like the buttons and the menus in this in the software or the the help files, the documentation? The website. The website. We, we do uh, both. We try to translate website and also the software. We have the some resource to make. Thank you. Uh, so are you using any translation platform for uh, translating this thing? Mm, one more time, sorry. Translation platform. Translation platform. Uh, like, uh, are you aware of a Transifex? No. Transifex? 
Uh, it's, a, it's a software package for oh, translation. No, no, no. Basically, uh, the translations are imported in this translation platforms, okay. and the translator will visit to that website and they will translate there. Yes. And they will provide you back the translated information okay. in your language. Oh, we'll try it, <laughs> make it more effectively. And uh, uh, one more question, where are you storing these translations? Storing it? Which, um, storing uh, in the, uploaded through the Dropbox or somewhere stored on the internet? Uh, are these publicly available for people to use? Or? Yeah, we just, uh, we want, our goal is to have a, another website in Chinese. Taiwanese. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much.